uh, say that I have my mixed vocals and everything is fine, but I just need the vocals to shimmer a little bit more, sound a little bit more Britney Spears. Uh, and then I would throw, then I would reach for this plugin usually. Uh, and just add a little bit enhancement to the whole vocal package. Those sort of things that when you think you're done with the mix and you start comparing it a little bit and you feel that, ah, okay, it's, it's a little muddy, uh, I need to come up and do this and this a little bit. Uh, vocal, drums still needs to have a little bit more excitement. Guitars still sound a little um, uh, boxy perhaps, or those sort of small changes this plugin could come in as a, as a nice thing. Uh, there are also some options there that work in a similar way, like the... Um, um, well, there is the Vitamin plugin from Waves that I also use quite often actually, uh, where you also can like enhance different frequency uh, bands and even widen, which is a pretty dangerous function. But uh, you could easily add up a little bit high end and even low end to make something just sound a little bit more uh, exciting. Uh, so that sees some use on my mixes usually. Um, all right, so that's about the, the vocal bus compression. And then everything comes down to what it's, what's needed. Um, I might have you know, an idea of a starting point, but uh, as I go along, I, if I need to invent new stuff, I, I do that, of course. Uh, but one thing that is an important part, I think, uh, of uh, my mixing that can be a little dangerous, but um, it's cool. It's my bus 12. You know what that is? No. You don't know about the bus 12. This is a CLA vocal. <laughs> no. Um, what I usually do is that I put my main vocals to a bus, and for some reason it has been bus 12, which is from an old joke that I cannot explain into English. <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> but uh, I call it bus 12, but it's actually a, a bus that is just called the key bus. And I would put this there, and I would put it into pre-mode. And I send it onto a mono master track in Pro Tools. What does that do? Yeah, it sums everything that comes into the key bus, would have to go through this bus. And there I will, look at this, I will spank the living hell out of everything that comes to this bus. But I'm not using the audio, the actual audio, into anything. But I'm creating like a static signal. As soon as something is fed, no matter the volume, uh, is fed into this bus, it just creates like a signal. Uh, and that signal can be used to key things. Uh, normally it would be on my different stereo groups, uh, not drums, but rhythm guitars, a little bit, uh, lead guitars, absolutely, and also on keyboards, usually. So what I then have on all those, uh, this is here because I imported this from another session. If I look at the, <coughs> sorry, lead guitar master stereo bus, there I have a little bit of a compressor. Uh, it could be, a, a ducker as well, but I've had best results actually with compression or really like um, um, uncolored compression. Um, so what I'm doing here is that I'm sending this key bus, which is just a signal as soon as someone sings anything, goes into here, the key input. <coughs> Um, and what happens here is that as soon as vocals is active, it will duck this um, whatever is coming through the, this lead master channel at this point. Uh, and I will put one of these into the rhythm guitars as well. So we can hear, if I exaggerate this, uh, where there's vocals, there is life. Uh, So if I listen to the vocals, 
Invisible King, Zion, Precision Duo, Shot. And rhythm guitars. Get this compressor. Invisible King, Zion, Precision Duo, Shot. Amazon, Invisible King, Zion, Precision Duo. And sometimes I need to adjust a little bit um, with how much I feed into it, etc. <coughs> What I'm doing here is just, now it was exaggerating, you can hear that it ducked away for the vocals, right? And you can choose the attack and release time depending on the aesthetics of how you want that to move around. But then I bring it back so I don't hear it. Uh, but I, I just know that it, that it is there. So <clears throat> um, when I can see that it's just barely touching the meters. Still go back with it. I could still hear it there. So I don't want to really hear it. But I want to feel it, if you know what I mean. So um, this is something that I use uh, on all my mixes, basically. So apart from doing all necessary automation, uh, that is a big part of the mix, um, I also do this thing. So the vocal always gets the best focus. Uh, and as soon as the vocals are not present, everything fills up a little bit. It's basically, um, this trick has been heavily used throughout the recording history in various uh, versions. The first time I heard about it was uh, <coughs> when people used to have um, an SSL compressor on, on the main uh, mix where they threw everything except the vocals, which they put aside. and. Uh, and they sidechain the compressor uh, with the vocals and that way the whole mix would come down just a tiny bit uh, like half a db or not even that as soon as the vocals uh, were active so um, yeah and that makes the cork which would be the vocals stay floating on the surface at all time basically mm -hmm. but as soon as i start to hear it, it it gets too much i just want the my brain to not understand that it's happening, but it would still be quite a difference if I would um, uh, take that out of the mix. Then the vocals would suddenly feel a little too quiet and the guitars a little too loud. And then I would manually need to go in and write all these things. Um, so this is a way of making the mixes a little bit more just, I don't know, pulsing so or uh, something. Yeah. But again, super easy to overdo. Uh, but um, if you just um, do it, do a little bit of a touch of this, it will definitely help you get the vocals in there. Because I think that vocal mixing, uh, I don't know if you agree, uh, um, Eli, but it, it, it's, um, I think usually that is something that takes the longest for, for people who start to mix, it's, to, I think it's really tough, especially in a style like this where there's so much shit going on at the same time already, and then somehow you need to make a vocal uh, be on top of all that. It's I think it's overwhelming. It is, and of course it's it comes down to to automation and uh, you know m making the mix good, and this is just the the final little detail to the puzzle that that can you know. Um, accommodate um, a mix that works even better, so to speak. Uh, but it's definitely uh, something I use a lot. I'm going to create one of those stereo masters also for my keys and throw this on there. <laughs> 